Remember the Neanderthals? Our superstar humanoid cousins of the Pleistocene era in all their wide-nosed and slope-foreheaded glory? They roamed through Europe and Asia for over 350,000 years before they vanished. This was around the same time our ancestors, the Homo sapiens, decided to take a vacation from Africa and explore the world. We may never know what truly happened to the Neanderthals and why they didn't make it to the present times, but thanks to some hefty archaeological digging and impressive fossil finds, we now know a bit more about them. One theory for their disappearance is that the climate wasn't suitable for them anymore. Supporters of this idea think Mother Nature turned on the Neanderthals and sent them packing. Unfortunately, if we look at Neanderthal archaeological sites in Italy, for example, there are no signs of weather catastrophes that could have wiped out this entire species. Others believe there was a bit of resource competition between Neanderthals and humans. That's why specialists also dug around several other archaeological sites where Neanderthals and sapiens might have rubbed elbows for about 3,000 years. In this case, it does seem that the Neanderthals were a bit behind with their tools. Their technology was like flip phones in the age of VR. But who knows if these two species ever crossed paths in that particular region. The evidence is still fuzzy. How they went extinct isn't the only information we're curious about when it comes to Neanderthals. Other scientists, for instance, are trying to decode some of the Neanderthal molecular barcodes to identify their specific traits, some of which you might share, believe it or not. Sure, Neanderthals as a whole species did, in fact, go extinct. But that's not to say remnants of their DNA can't be found in humans. Now you know how things go when folks live near each other. Some genetic mixing was bound to happen. The evidence? A dash of Neanderthal DNA which was found in modern folks. Now, this is where the plot thickens. Scientists thought that since Neanderthals never lived in Africa, their DNA wouldn't be found in modern African populations. Well, it turns out that African people have about 0.5% Neanderthal DNA too. This doesn't mean our Neanderthal relatives simply teleported through African territories without leaving any trace behind. What this discovery actually implies is that early humans might have visited Europe, mixed their genetic material with that of Neanderthals, after which they returned to Africa. That's a lot of migration. How did we stumble upon that Neanderthal DNA these days, you might wonder? Well, scientists gathered thousands of people from all around the world. Participants came from places like East Asia, Europe, South Asia, America, and Africa. Percentages may vary, sure, but around 20% of the good old Neanderthal DNA is still found in U.S. modern folks. Sure, the average Joe only carries about 2% of that caveman swagger. If you're from certain places or families that have a smidge more Neanderthal in their gene soup, you're looking at 3% tops. Is there anything in particular that we share with our long-gone humanoid cousins? As it turns out, our Neanderthal ancestors gifted us more than just their company for some thousands of years. They also passed down the incredible legacy of their noses. Well, you see, the Neanderthals were outfitted with some seriously high-rising sniffers. These weren't just cosmetic, they were also quite the asset in chilly climates. The icicle-dripping, teeth-chattering kind of cold where your breath could freeze before it leaves your lips. During those days, the Neanderthal noses worked as personal heaters, warming and humidifying the cold, dry air they inhaled. For that kind of extreme weather, these impressive nasal skyscrapers turned out to be quite handy. When our Homo sapiens ancestors decided to leave the sunny savannas of Africa for a spot of frostbite up in Eurasia, they bumped into the Neanderthals. This encounter resulted in not just an exchange of pleasantries, but also an exchange of genes that coded for larger noses. This newfound genetic nugget was discovered by scientists who dug deep into the DNA of over 6,000 volunteers. To complete the study, these scientists meticulously compared this genetic data to snapshots of the volunteers' faces. They measured the distances between various points on each face, such as the height of the volunteers' nose bridges. They then played a game of spot the genetic marker to identify if certain facial traits were linked with specific genes. By the end of this exciting chase, they hit the jackpot 33 shiny new genome areas were linked to facial features. One standout gene, named ATF3, was traced back to our Neanderthal ancestors and seemed to be the maestro of controlling nose height. Participants with Native American ancestry had Neanderthal hand-me-downs in this gene, contributing to their taller noses. 
Think of the ATF-3 gene as a Neanderthal housewarming gift to us humans as we stepped into colder climates from Africa. Interestingly, this isn't the first time our ancestors have played past the gene. Back in 2021, the same research team uncovered a gene influencing lip shape called TBX15. This gene was a little love note from the Denisovans, another set of our ancient relatives, who lived in Asia and went extinct around 30,000 years ago. Another part of the scientific community believes our Neanderthal buddies had this weird genetic feature when it came to their brains. Is that why they didn't make it? Through this theory, it was suggested that US humans might owe our brainy edge to a quirky gene mutation. This mutation gave our neocortex, that's the smarty pants part of the brain, a little population boom in the neuron department. This amazing gene of ours isn't all that different from the Neanderthal version. It's just one amino acid off. Just like ordering a coffee with one sugar instead of none. This tiny tweak is found in virtually all modern humans. Meanwhile, our extinct relatives, the Neanderthals, Denisovans, and other primate pals, all missed the mutation memo, at least according to the study. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just because we have more neurons doesn't necessarily mean we're geniuses by comparison. But these results do suggest that we might have rewired the brain in a way that gave us a cognitive leg up. Also, it's not all about this lone amino acid difference. It's just a piece of the puzzle. Scientists have previously found a whopping 96 differences between our DNA and that of Neanderthals that could have potentially affected our different outcomes as species. Studying Neanderthal DNA also gave us some insight into their relationships. In fact, we now have some solid evidence of what a Neanderthal family looked like. And surprisingly, it's not really that different from ours. For this study, researchers gathered information from a Neanderthal archaeological site located in Asia. They discovered that one particular family included a doting Neanderthal dad, his teen daughter, and a sprightly young lad who was possibly their nephew or cousin. Part of the group was also an older female relative, maybe an aunt or granny. Now, our young damsel would eventually pack her bags, wave a teary goodbye, and leave her papa's home when she found Mr. Wright. Had she been a boy like her young cousin, she would have been a happy homebody. But worry not, she wasn't stepping into a world of strangers. Her new community likely had some familiar, friendly faces. But how were scientists able to predict the ending of this story? By browsing through their gene pool, researchers were able to figure out that the Neanderthal social structure was patrilical. What this means is that most female Neanderthals left their homes when choosing a partner and started a new life with another family. The same research shows that our cave-dwelling clans likely weren't living in isolation either. Families living close by were probably visiting the same rock sampling areas to make their stone tools, the equivalent of a neighborhood hardware store. And when they weren't tooling around, they were busy hunting delicious meals like ibex, horses, bison, and other wandering critters. Scientists, however, were careful to add that this ancient family portrait might not represent the full spectrum of Neanderthal social life. They've kindly asked future archaeologists to get more Neanderthal DNAs on the Ancestry websites. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.